do have Nene and Papa back this week after taking a couple of weeks off. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great surviving the Atlanta heat wave. Holy moly. Even I'm ready for fall. Yeah, you're a Texan. You're a South Texan uh, down near the border, and even you are ready for a break from this heat. It has been incredible heat here. Yes, but back on track, we had two podcasts where my mom and I um, did a little throwback, and now you and I are back in the studio. From throwback to throw up. (laughs) All right, wait a minute. Take two. (laughs) Yeah. What I wanted to do today is, um, speaking of throwback, yes. I want to go back mm-hmm. to a little time in our past when um, you owned a technology company. Oh, yeah. And all the kids were in school, and I was kind of in between things, you know. What yes. am I going to do next with my life? <laughs> Those sure. things. And you said, why don't I come work with you? Yeah. Yeah, well, we had we had just lost one of our best trainers, and training is a big portion of our technology um, offering, and you were, A, so good with people. At the time, I didn't know it was because you were seven. Had no <laughs> idea. Well, you didn't know it either. You didn't know the Enneagram at that time. No, and because it was something new, I was like, oh, okay, that sounds fun. Right, which shows the weakness of a seven getting into things before, before they, they actually know. thought about it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So here's my point and where this fits into our podcast. Um, so when I got into the business with you, it was like it was a whole foreign country because being in technology, it has its own language. Yeah. Right? Yes. Like, oh, we sell voice over IP. Mm-hmm. What does that stand for? Oh, well, here, I'll clear that up for you. It stands for Voice Over Internet Protocol. Right. Well, that didn't help anything either. I mm-hmm. didn't know what that meant. I didn't know what DNS meant. I didn't know what data packages were. Or COV or ONS, all those kinds of things, tie trunks and circuit cards and all all the slang. And every every industry, anybody listening out there, you know, wherever you work, your job, your vocation is a universe unto itself. Let me tell you, I don't miss that at all. (laughs) Well, there's a reason I retired from that, and I don't miss it a bit either. No, because we kind of got into new languages. Yeah. And yeah, so we speak um, Mm -hmm. fluent. Well, not fluent. We, We continue to learn. And that's the point of this. This was, let me just get back on track here this foreign language um i I knew i needed to learn it if i wanted to be a good trainer and it all sounded very exciting to me and i actually loved it once i got into it but honestly it took a while but i remember sitting down with you and we had a training manual and oh my gosh i wanted to throw that thing at you and out the window but um I didn't take it personally if I needed someone to explain things to me because it it wasn't personal. Learning technology right. sure. had nothing to do with my character. No. And really You were my, still a character. <laughs> well, that's what made me a good trainer. <laughs> it was. People people like to be entertained. Right. But it didn't it didn't affect my sense of who I was. So here's where I want to take this. When those of us who have been on this Enneagram journey for a long time, we we have different terminology. Um, and so somebody who may or may not be interested in learning it might hear somebody say something like, um, well, do you know your number? Mm-hmm. Do you know your right. dominant wing? What's your instinct? Are you social, sexual? Are you self-preservation? And then those of us in the know, quote, I'm doing air quotes, those okay. of us in the know, They'll, they'll say, or will say, are you self-prez? Well, it stands for self-preservation, but it's like, oh, are you self-prez? And it can come off as, I don't know what it might feel like on the other end. People say, do you know what your arrows of integration are, disintegration? What's your stance? Are you aggressive or dependent or withdrawing? And it's My this, head hurts. Right? It's as overwhelming to somebody who doesn't know what you're talking about as it was for me when I walked into a meeting, a company meeting, and people were talking about voice over yeah. IP and mm-hmm. T1s and yeah. all those things. Mm-hmm. And so I just want to talk about 
how we talk about what we talk about. Yes. Yeah, because that, as we'll we'll discuss a little bit further on, that just makes such a big difference because immediately when you learn something new, as we've talked about in other podcasts, you really want to share it with the people you love. And it's just a natural inclination. You want to share this thing. You want them to know it, too. You want them to know this language you're talking about and what that language is. Yes, but if you've been learning this language for years and years, like I had been, then it is. It's you're fluent in it. So it would be like somebody coming into your house who spoke another language and just started speaking French all over the place and get like, why don't you know what I'm talking about? Right. And I, on the other hand, might feel like, I don't care to know what you're talking about. That's rude. It's intrusive. And it's condescending almost and trying to make somebody feel like, oh, well, you're not in the know. Yeah. And that's a word that when you're when you're talking about any type of levels of consciousness of any kind what's what's amazing to me is is that whether it's uh in the field that i work in a lot with spiral dynamics integral theory or what you're doing here with enneagram and other uh folks who work in the field of consciousness what's interesting is is the reaction of oh you you are condescending yes and and that's just, I think, part of our society today. There's this natural um, fear of superiority among people who claim to have some type of knowledge when, in fact, um, it's the exact opposite. The, the, the higher the consciousness goes, the more you're invested in in good relationships, the more you're invested in, in good friendships. But you're right. That word condescending hit me when you said that because I've run into that many times. But that's exact when you just said relationship. This is if you're throwing this at somebody and trying to get them to be interested so they can um, use it to enhance their relationships. Well, you've done nothing other than put a distance between you and that person. So there is no chance to learn because they're like look if i have to learn all that or talk like that um no thanks yeah i don't want to know it yeah and the truth is you can't know it all i can't know it all and no one no one can know it all and, and know the complexities of human behavior that's why this is a journey so what i wanted to ask about all this is what if you knew one thing What if you didn't have to know all the things day one or ever, but what if somebody was kind enough to show you how this might be something that could make a difference in your life by just changing, not really just saying changing, but becoming aware of one thing that could make a difference in your relationship. And I want to compare this to, and I know this seems like a stretch on the comparison level, but... Um, that's often that's part of the problem (laughs) with sevens is we have this thing in our head that when we start giving an example it makes sense in our head and I've seen you do it many times you're like you just give me that blank stare like all right if I hang in there for a while I know I know you're gonna (laughs) connect we're gonna come back around you're gonna connect those dots at some point but see this is because I now have learned taken the time to learn that this is the way that your thinking processes work that's it that's what I'm talking about But we'll talk about that a little more. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I used to be a part of a direct sales company years ago, and it was a wonderful company. But when somebody gets introduced to a direct sales company, the honest truth is probably that we get really excited about the big picture and the big bucks and the uh, potential for financial freedom and a free car trips or whatever it is that you see the, the big picture. But the lady that was the president of the company at the time, she, my gosh, it's been over 20 years ago. I remember her standing up and saying, would $800 a month make a difference in your life? And here we are sitting in a, in a big auditorium full of people trying to get revved up about being a part of a direct sales company. And she just wanted to know what would $800 a month do for our life? And I thought, wow, that's that's pretty simple. What if that one thing, what if the simple thing 
that I could do instead of thinking I have to know all the things today and set myself up for I can't I can't get there as fast as I want to. So what if I thought about, well, what if this one thing made a difference in my life? And so to me, that that's how this ties in, is we hear these big words. We hear people talk this talk, and you think, no, thanks. I can't, I can't do all that. I can't learn all that. It's all very confusing. But we have spent the time together and found out that it's these one thing, these two things or whatever that we've learned. Yes. And I think, you know, you're 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 getting to the point that we talk about in all different kinds of fields. And that is why is it that some people change and some people do not change? And that is a very difficult thing. That, that's that's one of the oldest statements around is no one likes change even when it's for the best. Right. And that's just a human nature. You know, you you use that term throwing out that a lot of people would never understand who were new to the Enneagram, two people sitting around talking about self-pres. But that self-preservation that you have uh, brought to my attention over the last few months is the normal, natural, instinctive, protective uh, barrier we set up when anything threatens us and a lot of times you know we don't change because we well we feel threatened by change we feel threatened that you're going to get into my stuff or we feel threatened yeah that you're going to try to get inside my boundaries and that affects my vulnerability um then there's other things where we we say you know uh it's a waste of time. I, I don't have any time. I, I'm already slammed. I've got too many things on my plate. Uh, there are a number of reasons why we don't change and don't look to take that first step, do that one thing. Or life's worked out pretty good so far. Yeah. And they really think that it has. And maybe their wife or husband is going, uh, hello. No, there's a few areas we might <laughs> we might improve on. How many times have people said about their relationship, I just feel like we're stuck in a rut. Now, the reason you get stuck in a rut is because you keep doing the same thing over and over <laughs> and over again in the same place. And that's how the rut develops. And that is in opposition to a desire and an appetite to grow. So when I say, okay, I'm looking today to improve, to find one more thing, or to find myself in a position of growth, then I've changed that whole perspective, and I and I remove the possibility of our relationship getting in a rut. And this goes back to, again, why we start every day by communicating. Yeah, right. You and I start with the coffee. Everyone knows that. Yes, and yes, we yes. start with communicate. Well, when you communicate every single morning, what are you going to talk about? You're going to talk about about whatever is an issue or you're going to talk about something you would like to do on and on I could go here and you're communicating with each other the place you would like to grow forward in and that is why constant communication is also a huge part of this uh, thing and in fact we'll talk here in a little bit about why it your Enneagram work eventually over time did impact me but not initially you know what I'm going to do a thing here. I'm going to jump back <laughs> to a thought I had because this is just a this is yeah. just a funny. This has nothing to do with this, but I posted this on Facebook. So if you're following me on Facebook or whatever Instagram, you probably already saw it. But if you didn't, <laughs> this happened to me this weekend, and this is what I'm talking about. When we get into a um, a mode of just speaking the language, you know, without thinking about somebody else, they may not know. <laughs> What you're talking about <laughs> but I was um, we were well, it was my mom and I and we were someplace and there was a man and woman also and we were all talking <laughs> I don't know I don't know what caused this conversation yeah. right. I can't remember at all except the guy said and I'm, I'm telling you this is exactly how he said it and so maybe yeah. you'll understand why I responded and um, he, <laughs> he said I'm type two. And I went, oh, my mom's a type two. Right. Just also. And he kind of looked at me funny and it occurred to me. It was just like that, you know, slow motion. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> and I said, oh, you mean 
you're not talking about the Enneagram, are you? And he said, I have type 2 diabetes, and right. what is the Enneagram? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, so you are thoroughly immersed in the Enneagram. And uh, and it and it is exciting when you do find someone else who's on the same page with you. Obviously, yes. that's always an exciting thing. But that is very funny. Yeah. I'm a type two. <laughs> it's like uh, you, you might be into like you might be yeah. a redneck. Yeah, you might be an enneagram nerd. If so, anyways, that was just my little. Um, that was free. That was just a that's funny. a seven side story <laughs> i got so excited yeah. i was like oh my mom's a two also <laughs> right mm, and not that wasn't a thing to be happy about yeah. and i'm not making fun of being a type two of course diabetic. not it's the way he's he said right i'm type two right but okay anyway <laughs> <laughs> you're justified I, thank you <laughs> i mean it's a mistake that any enneagram person could make it was yeah sometimes you just let your brain get ahead of your words like, right. Like the time that lady came around. Oh, you know what? that's I'm, another great I story. Know. You were walking I through a store here. or restaurant and you <laughs> and you came you came walking wait, the wait, same wait. direction as this other lady who's coming we right were at you. Carrying our trays of food because yes. it was like a truck stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And as you almost ran into each other, my brain right started thinking of things and then my mouth got mixed up with it and i meant to say because she said oh i'm so sorry and right. my, i meant to say oh that's okay mm -hmm. but i also thought had the thought no problem right and but at the same time my the words got crossed and she said oh i'm so sorry and i said oh that's a problem <laughs> <laughs> yes at which point you're oh. the lady and you just walk away. And I just walked away yeah. thinking, mm -mm, nope, <laughs> just move along. Okay, speaking of move along, I'm she so probably sorry. thought, I bet Rude. that lady's a seven, <laughs> and she never even brought it up. <laughs> okay, let's let's reengage here and um, talk about where this has made a difference. It's that one thing. Let's talk about this again. Yep. If you could learn one thing mm -hmm. that would change your the dynamics of your re relationship, not just your marriage, if you knew something about your child that at first you think, you know, he's just so moody or whatever the case is, and you realized, no, this is this is something about this child that's unique and special, and I want to get to understand that better. So I was, and I got to be honest, I bet in the beginning of our relationship, you thought you'd married a lunatic because one day I absolutely lost my sanity over the conversation that you and I had that we had to buy a new washer and dryer. Oh, gosh. Yeah. And we, yeah. I know where we, we were sitting at the table, and this has been like 20 years ago. Oh, yeah. I started crying. I said I had to go for a walk around the block. It mm -hmm. was just it was more than I could handle. And you had absolutely no idea what was happening because this was not going to ruin us financially at all. No. But I had a problem with money, specifically letting it go. And major purchases just sent me in a tailspin. Right. So. Right. Um, once we discuss, well, that was just an incident at the time, but. Well, which we talked about. Well, we and did. But I, I didn't eventually, know why. I eventually discovered, you know, the the root cause of your anxiety over that, and that entailed us talking about a whole lot of things. That, I mean, that add up to all of our anxieties because we all have them, and we all. This is why the Enneagram has been so helpful to me. It it really pinpoints why I'm most likely to be susceptible to certain anxieties, fears, difficulties, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I didn't know. When I sat there and you were so upset over that, that to me just sounded like seemed like a mundane thing. Okay, we need to buy a new washer and dryer, uh, blah, blah, blah. I don't even know what the rest of the discussion was. Uh, it was certainly not uh, a thing of how are we going to pay the rent. There wasn't any problem with the money. That's that's for sure. No. But the, the point of it being that if you, if you don't take time to talk through and then find out what the other person's perspectives are well here's what the big revelation was for me and again this has been like 10 years ago that i started learning about the enneagram 
when I realized that my type's core fear is of being trapped and deprived. Now that sounds just like a very brief thing and it might not mean anything to you if you don't have that issue. But this unlocked a door for me to understand why I react the way I do. What is that fear that I'm going to live and be deprived in my, that my needs are not going to be met, that I'm going to starve to death or be without. Um, I've never not been without. So it's not like I grew up um, under a bridge or anything. Sure. This is, this is a core ingrained characteristic of someone of my type. Once I become aware and we became aware mm-hmm. of and this is just one example. There's lots of places where I'm crazy. Um, but we have talked about that in any time now over the course of our marriage, lo these many years, you know that my initial reaction is going to be a little bit of discomfort. It's nowhere near what it no, used to be. In fact, no. I'm pretty good now about letting well, it go. Well, the, and again, that's because of what lines of thought you've pursued and the changes you decided you wanted to make in your life just like in earlier days uh, as a nine um i was easily angered by things that caught me off guard that were unexpected that weren't even big things but it was just the fact that it was unexpected i had my day lined out and and i'm all about peace don't rock the boat uh, blah 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 and so here's this guy that everyone thinks is this real easy going guy whose feathers never get ruffled and and the waters are always calm blah 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 and you begin to learn oh my gosh you know wow why are you why are you so upset about that and for you what it was nothing there? it was it was nothing but again you, you don't know these things until you take the time uh, to investigate th- the way these perspectives work. And, and I will say one thing on your behalf uh, regarding this and my eventual finally getting into the Enneagram. You were in the Enneagram for quite some time before I ever looked at it. Um, begin to read books about it Mm -hmm. and go into far more detail about it. And yet at the same time, because we were communicating daily, I'd sit there and have my coffee and you would talk to me about the Enneagram, but never at any time did you express a frustration. You never expressed a frustration, but why don't you get in? Can't you see how valuable this is? Can't you see how much it could help us? Can't you see? You never, ever pushed it on me. Um, I was very willing to talk about it at the same time. And then finally, it was a no-brainer. I mean, after a while, the lights come on. And uh, it's kind of like that thing where I walk in a room and go, you know, this Enneagram is very powerful. <laughs> and you just stare at me like, uh, where'd you get that well, idea? I'm, I'm glad you signed, find it. Yeah, so. very good. Good. You well, did you know, good. And here again, this isn't I didn't plan to say this, but I was at a um, an Enneagram chapter um, meeting, Atlanta, the Atlanta area one. And Emily, a girl was speaking in. If you follow her on Instagram, it's Enneagram with Emily. And she's a nine, so she has your same number. But they were, we were talking about the instincts that night. And she was just talking about how her schedule, her how she likes her day lined out. And she talked about being a self-preservation nine. And that's a whole, again, this is a different thing. But this one thing learning this one thing and she talked about i need my coffee in the morning i need my snack at this time i want lunch i want my snack at this time and she was like i travel always with um trail mix or a kind bar or whatever it is she said because i I need to know i'm if i'm gonna have a snack and that is the funniest thing that i never ever would yeah. have correlated with you and, and I, your type. But I, I get that. You're no. like the commercial. Where the, where yes, I'm not myself. That Snickers. Snickers. You're I'm deep. hangry. You are. <laughs> I'm hangry. <laughs> but we've talked about this a lot yeah. lately. In addition to this understanding the nine. Sure. And we've really gotten a lot into. Yeah. Don't the, argue the with me. Just throw me a bone. Just 
just throw, throw you just a snicker. Throw me a Snickers. <laughs> make sure I've got a snack and I'm the happiest guy on the planet. And, the, and what's funny is you're the opposite. You can uh, I'll be there ready for lunch. <laughs> And you'll go, you know, I, I haven't even eaten today. And I that is so far from my universe, it does not compute whatsoever. I'm thinking, how can you forget to eat? I know. That is one of the nine's most important parts of no, processing it, life. It, yes, but it's it's that self preservation. And self pres and I've got that too. Yes. So I, I would have I would have been saying amen to everything Emily was talking about. I love studying the instincts and we're gonna get into that. I wanna yeah. do a whole series on just the instincts um but but, you take things one at a time and that just knowing that one thing Mm -hmm. has just understanding each other being aware yeah and that's what this whole conversation is about today being overwhelmed with something makes you just not want to do it at all if i yes again back to the direct sales company being overwhelmed with what it took to get to the top, which I didn't, um, because well, I'm sure I found something else to do. Sure, yes, exactly. Because I, I want to do all the things. Yeah. Um, but I can tell you, I did do the small things, mm-hmm. and I did reap the rewards. It yeah. did make a difference in my mm-hmm. life, mm-hmm. and it was fun. Sure, which, which it had to be, and so. Yeah, for for all of us, it it goes back again to you you can't force other people to change. So just, again, focus. Today, I'm going to focus on me. I'm going to focus on what changes I need to make. And if I want to make a contribution to, let's say, uh, the lives of my kids, if I want to make a contribution to the lives of my kids, make the con. make the contribution. And I remember the passage uh that Jesus uh, talked about when he talked about doing things in secret Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. the reward is actually when you do things in secret. And I've tried to remember that, that, that there's this tendency to want the kids to, to say, Oh, I see what you've done for me. (laughs) Oh, I see what you're contributing to me. Oh, I see what you've sacrificed for me. There's this tendency to want some type of feedback that acknowledges if I'm going to try to make a contribution to your life, our marriage, a friendship with someone or something that's going on at work, I want an announcement to be made. (laughs) I want want a trophy. I want credit. I want something. Exactly. And it and this this other aspect of this is can i also be happy and at peace with my own personal growth uh because the more i am trying to force which again back to the example i used you did not the more counterproductive it it becomes and the only difference we can make is in ourself that's the change yeah you change yourself you become aware of your instinctual habits The things that throw you off course become aware in your life, and you will be amazed. You'll love your number. How you're, yeah. Hey, that's a good one. I want to talk about one more example, and then we got to wrap this up. Do it. And again, this is just our personal relationship, but we have this crazy big yard, and out around the pond, the weeds grow. I mean, you can, you may not be able to get your grass grow where you want it to, but I can guarantee you those weeds will thrive out there. Yes, they do. And so we will go out there. Mostly you take care of this, but there have been several times where I'm like, let's just go out there and do it together. Let's just mm-hmm. knock this out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> this is, it sounds like I'm just scatterbrained. I'm not, but I'll start on one section And just work and work and work and pull and pull. And then I will see those darn (laughs) big, the big (laughs) ones that grow like six feet tall. And I I can't help it. I just have to go over there and start pulling them. And I can tell you in the beginning when you and I were doing this. Yeah. You would get frustrated with me. Sure. But in your calm voice, you'd be like, well, (laughs) why don't we just work on this one area right here? The wagon is here. Right here. The bucket that we use to put the weeds in and that we share together to put the weeds in, it was right here between us. 
And if you run off and go to the other end of the bank and start <laughs> pulling big weeds, there's no wagon down there and there's no bucket down there for us to share. And we're not taking the bank one section at a time and clearing it out. That's the, I guess, the one wing in, in me coming from my nineness. I've got that one operation mode yes. brain, too. Do it in so I'm, and in order. Yeah, but <laughs> the thing is, instead of being upset, now that I know who you are, and you know who I am. We watch each other and just yep. we'll just start laughing because it's like, oh, he's doing his operation thing yep. where he's picking every little single weed that has to be pulled one at a time. <laughs> I got no patience for that. I'm a seven. I'm going down here. Those big guys, I want to go pull those. So, And you're watching me do the one onesie twosie and I have to have everything in a process oh, and blah, blah, blah. But It's just so, it's like, <laughs> oh my <laughs> yeah. gosh, I just want to go do the next thing. Mm-hmm. Let's go do a little here and a little there because we got to get to it all eventually so why don't i just hop over anyway that sounds absolutely ridiculous as an example but i'm telling you we have talked about this and we have found more analogies in the weeds yeah because you got to get to the root don't you babe yes you do and every day you you get up every day you get up if you will if you will just pull some weeds every single day they won't get out of control it won't become overwhelming you won't walk out one day and go my gosh our schedule has been such that we haven't been able to do anything out here for the last month and the weeds have taken over but when you take the time to just get up and pull a few weeds every day and when you focus on how to work together because my approach to pulling weeds and your approach to those weeds is different perspectives. But when we take the time to learn how to deal with those weeds together as a couple in our marriage, amazing things happen and life uh, moves along much more beautifully. I don't think I can add any more to that. That was perfect. Well, yes. Oh, I love that. Oh, thank you. I love you. I love your number. I love learning about you. And understanding the richness of who you are and learning about who I am and actually being able to say, you know what? I love who I am. Mm -hmm. I have areas where I need to weed out a little bit. But through this journey, I'm learning and I hope all of you listening truly get to learn the joy of who you are by loving your number. Talk to you soon. Good one, babe. (laughs) 